Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today Seraph just updated the entire line of Affinity products and I am a huge fan, especially of Affinity Designer. So they did a 1.8 release across the entire spectrum. So designer, photo, uh, publisher, and all of the um, iOS applications were all just updated to 1.8 standard. And there's some really nice new stuff in this update. And the cool thing is this ain't subscription-based software. It is version-based. If you've got a 1.x version, you get this update and you get it for free. That's a big part of why people love Seraph is they basically they're bringing out uh, Adobe alternatives alternatives to things like publisher Photoshop and uh, Illustrator but they're for a really reasonable price and at a feature set that kind of actually does compare so what you see in front of you this is affinity designer this is literally a program I use on a daily basis it's your typical vector application vector graphics application you draw things basically in shapes composite little shapes together put special effects on them uh, you build them up into layers and you build more complex scenes as a result very similar to ink Escape or um, Adobe Illustrator in scope and functionality. It's just this one speaks to me. I very much like the way things work here. The other thing I really like is the performance is really good. We can zoom in, zoom out. You've got an infinite artboard, uh, so you can just kind of keep going and going, and then you can crop it down to the size that you want to work with at a later date. Um, so yeah, that is essentially how you work here. Now on top of that, you've also got a pixel blend. So a lot of times you got to rasterize your art, especially if you're working in game development. You may not be outputting vector graphics. Cool thing is we've got the ability to actually split between. So on the left, you've got your vector. On the right, you have the generated pixels, and you can see how the end rasterized result will come out. On top of that, we've also got the pixel profile. So we can switch over here, and you'll notice a complete set of tools changes. So here you've got things like traditional raster paintbrushes, smudging, cloners, that kind of stuff. Whereas we go back here, we've got the vector graphics workflow. So we've got things like shapes built in and so on. We got excellent text tools, text placement, and, and that kind of stuff. I do all of my title graphics using this guy. Uh, a number of different special effects you can apply to each different uh, item within your, your setup, uh, layers, and of course layers all have blending modes and special effects as well. Uh, it's just an all around great tool. Now on top of that, we've got a couple of feature improvements to 1.8 as a part of this release. Uh, the handling of vectors themselves, so when you're actually in a vector graphic, the handles, the, the control points are optimized and simpler to work with. Uh, we now have this new stock photo option here. So once you've agreed to it, you've got access to Unsplash Pexels and Pixel Bay. And you just come in here and say you needed some stock photos for, I don't know, cars. Come in here, search for cars, and then you basically get access to a ton of royalty-free car stock images that you can then bring into your scene. Just drag and drop it in and you are good to go. So once again, you've got three different sets of libraries that you can go through and we'll shut that one down. And then the um, other two major things that they've done here is if you go into your color profiles here, you'll notice now you have all of the Pantone and Pantone Plus color options available. Um, so if you're looking to match Pantone color palettes, they are all in here now. Uh, so if you're looking at pastels and neons and so on. Uh, so again, if you're working with that color set, that will definitely be a nice feature. And then the final new thing that they've done here, and actually not 100% certain I like this, uh, there's a new new documents setup. So you've got here all your various different predefined settings. So say example, I'm publishing for a device. I can come in here and say, you know, predefine a device. So if I was making a document for a Kindle, there we go dimensions zoomed for a Kindle. And as I mentioned earlier on, there's artboard. So this is actually our, our workspace or our, is, is infinite in size. We're just clipping down to the artboard as defined by our device in that case. So that is the one new feature on that regard that I'm a little iffy on. I actually liked the old interface a little bit better, but I can understand why people would appreciate the new one. Now, at the same time, uh, their photo application as well uh, also got an update. Uh, this is Affinity Photo. Um, I actually don't, I don't use this as much. This is more uh, my wife's role in terms of touching up photos and photo work. Traditional paint-based applications, some of the tools you saw uh, from before, but by no means uh, this has a much larger raster set. We've also got a number of different uh, profiles or personas we can go through. So if we want to start doing some liquidification, we can do so. So we can grab a pixel layer here, like our background layer here, and then we can go over to liquidify, and then we can start doing stuff to it. Uh, so it, it's a very powerful, yeah, let's apply that. So now she's got a lazy eye. 
Sorry about that, lady. Uh, it's a very powerful um, pixel-based graphics application. Basically, I just come in and uh, use it for cropping and magic wand selection tools, and that's about it. But if you're doing coloring work and so on, uh, it, that's kind of what it does. You've got all the various different filters you would expect to see. Uh, it's also now, this particular version has improved plugin support. Um, so an existing ecosystem of plugin is more likely to work with it. Um, but yeah, that's kind of... That's kind of the idea here. The nice thing is generally you get a nice preview of things as you're working with them. So you can see what it will look like before you're done. And that's generally why I like Serif's products in the first place. It's very tactical, uh, tactile, hands-on. You kind of get what you expect. You get a nice preview. Uh, things just kind of work. And again, when it comes to things like text, text is where a lot of these programs, they make it needlessly complicated. This guy does a great job with text. And you get, so if you're coming up here, you're working with text, uh, let me go back over here, do a real time preview. Uh, you can easily come in with the text selected. Oh, let me go back. With your text selected, you can switch between your various different fonts that are available and get real time previews of how those fonts are going to look, which is a huge time saver. And that's one of those areas where I find something like Inkscape really frustrating is when I start working with text, getting that real time preview, especially once you start getting in and you start applying special effects to it. So say we add an outer glow that was purple to our guy, came into the advanced settings. The nice thing here is once again, you're getting real time previews as we are working with this stuff. So you can just kind of get in here and experiment with things until you get a look that you actually like by just ultimately just playing around. And it's, it's a great application for kind of encouraging that kind of um, hands-on experimentation. So it's, again, it's another reason why I, as a non, uh, you know, I don't do art on a full-time basis. So having tools that really kind of encourage me to get in there and play around, I really do appreciate that. So as I mentioned, the entire Affinity line was just updated to 1.8 version. So you see here, uh, Publisher also got some love. Publisher isn't really something I'm talking about because I don't see a lot of use for it in the world of game development. It's a competitor to something like InDesign. And speaking of which, it actually got the ability to import InDesign IDML files. So if you're doing page layout kind of work, uh, Publisher is a new program that actually, I think last year, it got the Apple App of the Year award. Very, very nice. So we've got new features of functionality across the entire suite. You can see which programs are updated here. So Photo just got PSD Smart Objects. So Photoshop Smart Objects can now be embedded and it actually still works on the iPad. And that's actually one of the things I'm really impressed with this guy. The iPad functionality is available. Um, it, and so Photo, Publisher, and Design are all available on the iPad as well. They completely work with their desktop alternatives. They completely do cloud integration so I can work on a thing, save it out to my Dropbox, open it up on desktop and just keep going. And they seem to be pretty much 100% of the functionality on the iOS devices, which is sweet. So we got template support uh, on all of the things. So you can save a document as a template and reuse it time and time again. And then once again, you can also save it up to various different cloud services that are all integrated out of the box. So that's available on all three of them. Live pre-check lighting, again, just publisher only. Stroke. Um, massive expand stroke improvements. So incredibly accurate results with fewer nodes, which is nice because you start getting more and more control point nodes in there. It just makes it harder to like clean up and work with. Uh, plugin support improvements. Uh, experience the power of a range of plugins in Affinity Photo, including support for the Nick Collection 2.5 by DxO. Uh, document merge in Publisher. Canon CR3 RAW support in photo, unified toolbar on all products, but that is a Mac OS only feature. Smart master pages, again, publisher only resource, collect resources, publisher only. The new stock photos we kind of looked at quickly, uh, so you could bring that in to bring in stock photos from uh, those three different sources. Uh, the iPad versions for uh, designer and, and photo got um, keyboard shortcuts. Uh, we got better metadata handling in photo and a number of other features. As you saw, we got the Pantone library of colors in there. That's on all of the products. The new document dialogue on all the products. Again, I'm a little iffy on it. Um, lens correction improvements in photo, Boolean operation improvements in Affinity Designer. Uh, so just a nice across the board update. And again, if you own any of these products, they are completely free. So photo, that update was completely free. Designer, that update was completely free. And publisher, that update was also completely free. Now you may be wondering, okay, so right now to buy the equivalent program from Adobe, you got to get Creative Cloud, spend 50 bucks a month or 30 39, I think it's the cheapest you can go there, or 
17 or something for an individual application per month. So what is it gonna cost us to buy an Affinity product? Well, publisher, as an example, 70 bucks Canadian, it's $50 US. Designer, $50. Uh, photo, it's 50 bucks. And then if you go on the, uh, the iOS devices, I think they're 20. So uh, I bought photo and designer, 100 bucks, never spend another dollar in my life until at least a new major version comes. And major versions seem to be very, very rare. So they do a really good job of not screwing their customers. And in this day and age, the number of people out there that aren't screwing their customers is getting to be kind of rare. So I really appreciate Serif. They're one of the last companies out there that has a good product at a good price, no subscription required. Uh, they're not constantly doing upgrades to make you do more. It's one of those things you kind of just pay your money and you get something of value in return. What a rare concept. And I'm again, I'm in the boat of people. I don't like subscriptions. I know a lot of you people don't like subscriptions. And if you're looking for an art package and the open source stuff isn't necessarily doing it for you, I highly recommend you check out Affinity Designer. First of all, it is an amazing program and Affinity Photo. They are both excellent. And then of course, if you're into public and you want an alternative to InDesign, check out Publisher as well. All right, so that is the 1.8 releases to the uh, broad stroke of Affinity products. As I mentioned, the iOS versions are out there and they were also updated with the same features that we saw all on the same day. Uh, so uh, great product, definitely recommend that you check them out. All right, that's it. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.